Hello, Dr. Cisse covering anatomy and physiology. Today we'll talk about tissues. As you know, a tissue is just a group of cells together that will perform the same function. We have four major types of tissues in our body. Epithelial, connective, muscular, and nervous. Epithelial, AP meaning top, thelia means layer, or all the top layers of the body. For example, the skin, the top of the tongue, or inside of internal organs. The connective tissue will be the tissue that will connect everything together. The muscle will be, muscular tissue will be muscle, and the nervous tissue will be the nerve and in the brain and spinal cord. Now, if I talk about the epithelial, we divide the epithelial based on two things. The shape of the cell and the number of layers. The shape could be three different kinds of shape. It could be squamous, which is flat, cuboidal, like a cube type, and columnar, like a long. And the layers could be either one layer, called simple, or many layers called stratified. For example, if you look at this one, this one would be based on the shape, squamous, based on the layer, simple, because it's only one layer. So this one will be simple, squamous, epithelial. Here, you can see, now you're gonna wonder, you're gonna say, why do we have something at the bottom? Of course, if you have simple squamous, it has to sit on something. Either a connective tissue, a muscular tissue. That's why you see all that. But normally, you only see the top because it's the only top layer of that. So this one is simple squamous epithelium. If you take a lot of these together and put them on top of each other, you create stratified squamous epithelium. Why it's called stratified? Because it has many layers. Why squamous? It has the shape of the squamous as flat. Stratified squamous epithelium will be any part of the body that can be exposed to outside or something can touch it. For example, the skin is exposed to outside. It has to have many, many layers to be able to protect you. It'll have stratified. Why is it squamous? Because the cells are so flat, they don't have to have a lot of food. You don't have any food on top of your body. It's inside. That's why they're not long. They're not big enough to eat a lot of food. That's why they're very flat. That's going to be... Uh, squamous epithelial, why stratified, why many, many layers, because you should wonder why it's not just one big layer holding you. No, because these cells have to multiply and die every second. They have to be small enough not to eat a lot, but tough enough to live for a long time. That's why they're stratified, they're squamous. Then the next one will be cuboidal cell. The cuboidal could also be simple cuboidal. Why it's called cuboidal? It has the shape of the cube. Now, why do you see them in circle or straight? Because usually they're going to be in tube-like organ that will produce something. For example, this is the uh, kidney. It will produce urine. So it has to be something that will produce something. That's going to be simple cuboidal. When you put a lot of these together, you form stratified cuboidal. That will be, for example, here. You see many cuboidal uh, cells on top of each other. Where do you find it? This is going to be, for example, the sweat gland. You can find stratified cuboidal epithelium. The next shape will be columnar. The columnar also can be simple, or it could be stratified, or it could be pseudo-stratified. Here, for example, I see a columnar epithelium. Here, you see they're long, but the nuclei are at the bottom of the cell. That's what means columnar epithelium. Simple or stratified, this is simple because it's only one layer. But what about this one? This one looks like it's stratified, but it's not stratified. That's why it's called pseudo-stratified. Here you can see it is long. It is not many layers, just one layer. They squeeze together to form the pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. And you can see it has cilia. That's why we call it ciliated. You see some cells between them, the goblet cell, which produce mucus to protect the top of the cell. Now, let's talk about the one that doesn't look like, it looks like a stratified squamous, and it looks like a, a cuboidal. It's called transitional. It could be like a transitional Why? Because during bladder uh, making of the urine, for example, if the bladder contains urine, it's kind of full, the cells could look flat, or they could look longer. They could be like squamous or cuboidal. They call them uh, transitional. They transit between the uh, squamous and the cuboidal. All these will be epithelial tissue. Now, the next tissue will be uh, uh, connective tissue. The connective tissue are very broad. For example, you can see blood as a connective tissue or bone as connective tissue. How do you know this is a bone? It looks like tree trunk. You can look at it. It looks like a little circle with uh, something between them, right? So that's gonna be bone tissue, and this is a blood. Both of them are connective tissue. 
And then the next one will be adipose tissue, fat tissue. This is adipose tissue. It is also a connective tissue. You find them between organs as a pad or as cushioning for our body. Then the most popular connective tissue will be the areolar tissue. Areolar is everywhere, between every organ, passageways of, for example, nerves and blood vessels and stuff like that. It's under the skin as well. It's called um, uh, uh, connective tissue because it connects everything in your body. This connective tissue is called areolar. This is the same thing here. It's the most popular. It has all the cells and everything. Now, you have also reticular tissue. Reticular tissue will be, for example, in the spleen. Why it's called reticular? It looks like a bunch of sponge because it filtrates. It's going to be like a lymphatic system. It has to clean the blood. It has to filtrate. That's why it looks like a sponge. That's going to be what uh, reticular tissue is next to areola because the both of them are connective tissue. Now, if you think about it, your cartilage is also connective tissue. We've got uh, different type of cartilages. The cartilage could be fiber cartilage. You find fiber cartilage between the body of the vertebrae, for example. Right? But in the body of the vertebrae, uh, it's a, a, a cartilage. But what kind of cartilage? Fibro cartilage. It has a lot of fibro, fiber, collagen fiber inside of it. And then you have a cartilage that looks like uh, elastic. It is called elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage, for example, your ear is elastic. It is a cartilage, but what type of fiber? It has elastic fiber. That's why it's called elastic cartilage. Now, here, you also see dense regular and, and dense irregular connective tissue. These are two different kind of connective tissue. One has a very organized pattern of collagen fiber. It's called dense regular connective tissue. The other one has disorganized uh, uh, collagen fibers inside of it. That one is called irregular connective tissue. You'll find that in the dermis of the skin, the second layer of the skin. But in the dense regular connective tissue, you can find that in the tendon and ligament, for example, at the end of the muscle, or the connection between two bones, both of them will be dense, regular connective tissue. They are connective tissue because they are made of ground substance cells and fibers. Here you see dense, irregular connective tissue, like the dermis of the skin. Here also the same thing, dense, irregular connective tissue. And this one is a what? Dense, regular connective tissue. Why? Because they have a regular pattern here. The third tissue, group of tissue will be the muscles. Muscle, we have three types of muscles. We have skeletal muscles, smooth muscle and cardiac muscle. What do they have in common? All three muscles job is for movement. The heart beats, it's a movement. The smooth muscle of the stomach can digest the food by moving, it's a movement. And the skeletal muscle will be the voluntary muscle. What do they have in common? You can see the cardiac muscle and the skeletal muscle, both of them have striation. They have lines on them. The smooth muscle does not have striation. Which one are involuntary? Both cardiac and smooth are involuntary. The cardiac is voluntary. So they have something coming, something different, right? Here you can see the smooth muscle and the cardiac muscle, okay? The last tissue will be the uh, nervous tissue, the nervous system. So here you see a neuron with all the glial cells between them. It's the same thing here. On the picture you can see that this is the neuron with all glial cells between them. So basically, we got four types of tissues. We got epithelial, connective, muscular, and nervous tissue. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in class.